three books that uh, I read uh, in my younger days that really had an impact uh, on me were The Great Gatsby, Catcher in the Rye, and Letters from the Earth by Mark Twain. Uh, two are pretty common. You probably read them in high school or, or uh, college, which is exactly why I read them. But Letters from the Earth was the Mark Twain book that I discovered on my own. Uh, I was about 16, and it was not Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. You know, those that was Mark Twain to me. Uh, this this was a book that was, you know, this great storyteller. All of a sudden, he's uh, wrote, written a book where it's like pen pals writing each other, heaven to earth, and it's discussions and debunking and analyzing and talking about religion and religious dogma and stuff. And a lot of people went straight to the idea that this was Mark Twain uh, making comments about a a a being an atheist. You know, uh, I'm sure that's there. But with this book being new to me and having no influence from people about what my thoughts were going to be, I took it more like the hypocrisy of people in general with the theme being, you know, they sing about uh, being in heaven and playing harps and floating around and praying and things, yet they're miserable and you got to twist arms and stuff when you try to get them to go to the church just for an hour on a Sunday. Now, the whole religious aspect is not what I'm touching on and stuff. Actually, I found it very uncomfortable. Those were new ideas to me. And growing up in Virginia, and you are part of the Bible Belt and stuff, even if you're agnostic or, um, it, it's there. Okay, it's 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 there, and it gets there. So it's it's it was a very new concept to to read something that was questioning those things. But what I really got out of it was the fact that I have found something that I know nothing about. I have never heard anybody talk about it or reviews and stuff. And the opinions that came out of that are mine. Okay. Now being somebody who really feels more like a people watcher a lot. And I'm not talking about being nosy on the neighbors or anything like that. But it's like I've always had this thing where the hypocrisy that I've always seen that really kind of gets me is that we're as human beings Throughout the generations, we seem to just repeat ourselves in a cycle. And then you'll have one generation, you know, kind of going after the other generation. That younger generation will kind of look down upon that older generation because they're old and things like that. Yet they're very similar in what they are. I kind of put it up there with uh, being the people watcher, you know, when in my teen years, if I went to one of my friend's house with them or ran it, you know, saw them with their parents. I always started. I started noticing that if you know, daughter and dad didn't get along, it, it went beyond not wanting their little girl to grow up or anything like that. It's that dad was having a problem with the daughter over the same things that he was having problems with his wife that had nothing to do with the daughter. The two are similar, and vice versa. Okay, son and daughter, or it was about that older generation. And that younger generation being more similar, they were too similar, and thus they and then, and then they clashed. And that's what I'm always feels like I'm seeing. When a video like this comes up, an idea for it in my head, I always know it's coming because it kind of gels over time. It'll be a conversation here, an observation there, and then something will always kind of I've got it, I guess. You know, usually driving and stuff, right? And I want to talk about like the generations and stuff because. We're in a time of the millennials. I'm of Generation X. Uh, before that were the baby boomers, and I had a problem with the baby boomers. The millennials have actually kind of made me get some perspective on that. You know, th these are not in really important things, but for some reason, I'm not alone. You know, people seem to think about it. You know, waves of nostalgia. People are just kind of into history and stuff, and it always blows my mind how we history seems to repeat itself. Do people not know? A little bit of history and stuff, you know, and that's why we have cliches that have stuck around and become cliche because they're so true. Those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it on a personal level. God knows I made the same mistakes over and over, so there's that hypocrisy, you know. It just it just amazes me how we have that hypocrisy in life in so many things, and sometimes you just can't avoid it. Sometimes intentional and out of ignorance, you know. So uh, basically. 
I'm going to read a passage out of The Great Gatsby here, and maybe you'll see where I'm coming from here. This is the last two uh, paragraphs. Gatsby believed the green light, the logistic future that year by year recedes before us. It eludes us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther, and one fine morning. So we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. Okay? Gatsby was another book, and same thing with Catcher in the Rye, that you, I call it like the romantic ideas out of the book. When you read it for a class or college, you know, it's pretty, you don't really, it, it's ironic because, you know, you're sitting there acting like you've read this book, and you're talking about ideas in there, or you're doing a book report or something like that, yet there's things that are sitting out on a syllabus or something or things you're supposed to take out of it and stuff the same symbolism the same idea what is this saying about history and stuff yet i got other things out of this i got other things out of catcher in the rye also uh, all three books that i mentioned all seem to pull an intangible intangible from the human condition uh for lack of a better word um I feel like I'm talking cliches of things I've heard before and stuff, but it's true. They, they bring out an honesty that is in all of us, uh, authenticity uh, of, of, of are, you, are you really into what you're doing and who you are and are you so lost. Um, Great Gatsby, it's about happiness and stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a reflection of what happened with the first generation I'm going to talk about. It's, it's 1925. Great Gatsby is a millionaire. And the more you find out about Great Gatsby, the great, you know, about, you know, the Great Gatsby there is that, you know, bootlegging is where he got his money and became a millionaire and how has all this material with wealth. Yet he's not happy. He has social status and he's not happy. And this was all a reflection of the, of the gener the, the, they're called the lost generation, which I think is inaccurate because after I was told what this book was about and what that generation was called, the lost generation was actually T.S. Eliot and Gatsby and I think Fritz Gerald and some authors and uh, artists, I guess, that were writing about this stuff, you know, from the 20s up until the early 30s. The, but we'll call them the lost generation. The lost generation was hit by two things. They were hit by World War One, and they were hit by a super flu of the teens. One, as I was growing up, I was told we need to get prepared for because it's supposed to hit us also. Great things to teach you in school. This generation, called the Lost Generation, turned around and so many of that generation died that it changed the whole way people thought and the way they acted and they kind of abandoned things. This was also a, a decade where I feel like pop culture was actually being born. We had a uh, sensationalism of, what was it, 1888 or something, of Jack the Ripper, who wrote a letter saying that he gave, he's giving birth, he gave birth to the 20th century or something, if that's true or not. We had Industrial Revolution. We had silent movies starting. We had uh, the sort of the beginnings of comics even and, and things like that so all of a sudden artists and things were having a voice for and being influenced or making statements about what was around them they've always done it with editorial cartoons on politics and stuff but now other things are coming in in turn these things are starting to influence the generation and that's why i'm starting the lost generation because it seems like everybody started having the same things to pull from whether they knew it or not and this generation hey you know I try to stay away from movies and stuff. I've never really met anybody from that generation except when I was a kid, you know. But, you know, it was a very decadent time. It was, you know, a lot of partying, you know, prohibition was around the corner. Uh, unless it was, yeah, not, things like that were going on. And all of a sudden, man, there was like this exciting time uh, of, you know, people who have just lost. It's probably, I would imagine, so many people died. Everybody knew somebody that had died that was their age. Or was around the corner made him very very aware of the morality and kind of flipped out a little bit but then that leads into the greatest generation and that's the one I respect they uh, turn around and this was the generation that lived through the depression uh, World War two hit and we had like the ultimate identifiable evil that you could put out there and they lived through that and this generation ended up coming out of 
hell, more or less, and they wanted things to be uh, simple. They, they beat the great evil, now they deserve to get back to their lives and actually have a life. And this is where your suburbs came up. This is where Superman, Batman, comic books and things were starting to get big. The movies were huge. You know, they went, you know, they started getting sound. They started getting color. Um, you know, people probably felt like they got their just rewards. And this is also the generation that after they had come back from World War II, these people turned around and picked up their lives. You know, women were left back. They started working in factories and stuff, had jobs and everything. Uh, and then uh, we turned around and you know they, they were right back where they were working everybody within the status quo and in this time and what we were starting to have was music coming in jazz swing music big band music and stuff movies were hitting things were getting real popular and uh, then it happened in the 50s we got rock and roll the baby boomers were coming baby boomers were the ones born after world war ii when there's a war uh there's a great big huge birth rate because people are catching up and what did we have in the 50s man james dean marlon brando elvis rock and roll jerry Lee lewis the comments all of a sudden all these things are on your tv and people are flipping out and Yet, all of a sudden, we're starting to get the red scare. Yeah, are you a communist? What's going on? People were still complaining about some politics and stuff. Sound familiar? And then, um, things went on. The baby boomers got older and things like that. Then we hit in the 60s, man. And, you know, part carrying over from the 50s, man, you know, the Cold War was going on. And people had this, this fear of... Um, nuclear war happening we get the bay of pigs then we get marilyn monroe we get romanticized and stuff the beatles come after elvis is even put in the army the you know they got elvis and stuff and the rebels of the 50s influenced the rock and roll of the 60s big time at least with the british invasion and stuff like that i mean we had the whole concept of a rebellion coming against a generation who knew who came from nothing and they fought the great evil and they knew that this was the way things should be in their mind. They got safety and comfort and stuff. We got the rise of the suburbs. And, uh, you know, very, on TV we started having, uh, on TV we started having the whole concept of this romanticized way of living and stuff put up there, you know, like uh, Father Knows Best and everything like that. And with my grandmother and, and the people I started seeing from that generation as I was growing up, man, this put an amazing amount of pressure on them. Their kids started thinking, why can't you be like the families on TV? People started thinking this is the way things were going to be. And uh, so, you know, pop culture ended up giving unreal expectations, but it was all was trying to show this way of life they wanted to keep safe and stuff. So, you know, very, so what happens, man, you know, people aren't like that people aren't perfect and things started kind of bubbling over and you started having uh, you know they started getting alcohol and pills that's all there is to it prescription you know mommy needs her medicine daddy needs his medicine that's what they called it mm, gosh I would be getting yeah so then the Beatles hit man and the Beatles were like huge fans of, you know, the 50s rock and roll and Elvis and everything like that. And they even joked about being, yeah, we're just clones of Elvis and it's not true. And they would do their thing and they were witty and they were fun. And uh, we just, you know, the Bay of Pig invasion hit where, you know, everybody thought this is it. The war, nuclear war is happening. Kennedy became like, you know, the epitome of, of America by standing up and handling it and stuff. And then Kennedy was shot and the world went nuts yet they used the Beatles as an excuse to do it and I've heard them say describe it like that and we're into Vietnam and things and now this is this is where I kinda had a problem and the Millennials have helped kinda give me peace with this, this generation because that generation from the 60s and stuff I grew up in you know I heard some documentary or something say you know the 60s was the party and 70s was the hangover and I got to grow up in the hangover. I got to grow up with the burnouts. I got to grow up with the vets that were messed up. I got to grow up with like what kind of mess are, are you making around here and stuff, you know, things like that. 
but it was a generation that from my perceptions and that's what this is my perceptions is that these guys it actually it's the 60s a lot of it was really life and death and it's just amazing to me that one of the most creative times music wise art wise thinking wise came from a fear of knowing that uh, you gotta grow up quick because when you graduated you're gonna be sent to a war and you're probably coming home dead a fear of dying a very rational fear of dying is how I see what prompted the 60s and the people that lived came back told people what was going on how they reacted it became disillusioned and uh, counterculture was happening what was and wow what came out of that what came out of that then as time went by you start finding out that this love peace and things that they're going on with and stuff you know you start finding out you know it's heavy into drugs uh, the free love promiscuous sex uh, a lot of the guys if you believe the stories you know the hippie guys were wife beaters to keep people in line and stuff apparently we had the civil rights movement, you had feminism, burning bras, really taking off and stuff. The world was changing. And they're going to change this world, by God. And they had the momentum, and they, and they had it going, and everything was coming up, and the people from the previous generation were probably, like, flipping out. And then it happened, they had Woodstock. And a lot of people feel like... You know, that's not exactly what really killed the 60s, what put the nail in the, in the final nail in the coffin. And this is where I had the different idea of what really did it. They called, the, the, it seems like everything they had build, building for, they got the numbers, and now there's this place that we're coming to that means something, and it's Woodstock, and it's going to be this great thing. Even having mud on your pants was like, I've got my Woodstock mud and all this stuff. And... All of a sudden, it's like we're all together and we've done it. We've changed the world. And we're here and look around. And all these people, they can't stop us. And all these bands playing. And it was something so big and powerful that the more you look into Woodstock and the more that you hear about it, and if you watch the documentaries or get the records, the albums, the things like that, it's something so big and so visceral that if you close your eyes, you can actually feel like you're there sometimes. And to me, the freaking climax was when Jimi Hendrix came out and he has taken the national anthem away from all the other generations that had used the national anthem and he played it on his electric guitar in a way that was all theirs. They had done it, they had taken it, and I can hear it now. And it's fucking beautiful. But to me, that's where things actually climax and then it's downhill from there because picture this this is how I see it okay if you weren't a child of the 60s before you got to Woodstock you sure were when you were there even if you didn't partake in the drugs and getting high and, and everything that was going on there you're out there for days in an ocean of people you're tired you're hungry you're like wow you're on adrenaline you're messing that will that'll mess with your mind or you are high or you did take the brown acid and now you're discovering granola in a tent you know to be reminded that you are a human being on this planet and the drugs and the you know tripping out and everything like that then all of a sudden you hear them announce a band called Gre uh, Sha Na Na and all of a sudden you're hearing this doo-wop music and you're hearing this crooning and you're seeing them dance and stuff and all of a sudden it's like you get this big wave of nostalgia of when you were a kid and this is what you were seeing on TV and all of a sudden that wave of nostalgia and peace of a better time it, to me started a seed of flooding people because then you go into the 70s the hangover it's over and we started getting movies like American Graffiti and we started getting TV shows like Happy Days and all of a sudden you know everybody's kind of it's the first time that I could think of where there's we want a better time of the 50s and stuff people are tired the 60s were so chaotic in their minds and stuff now they just want everything real peaceful and stuff go and listen to the music you know you know the carpenters became huge you know all the uh, the hollies came out with uh, little love songs and pilot and stuff and everything like that and right underneath that, under the ground and stuff, you start having the rise of punk, the rise, the real rise of David Bowie and things. There was still this 
generation that needed something. And by the time Punk came along, what did this Generation X start getting called? They were called the Lost Generation, the Blank Generation. All of a sudden, it's 50 years later, and there's this cycle. There's this loop all of a sudden. People had just given up. And it really did get viewed as, you know, they were about to change the world in the 60s, and those sons of bitches gave up. And all of a sudden, you're seeing that you know the aftermath of all this is that either these people who had stayed in college to stay out of the draft ended up getting real jobs and money and became the yuppies of the 80s uh, or they became burnout and then you've always through every generation just had this middle of the road people who are getting married having families getting a job and living life and seeing all this shit going around them and every now and then having to deal with their kids with it and stuff now we're getting to like around where I'm at, right? And you have the 80s. The 80s came in, and to me, when you look back on it and stuff, consider what we're coming through because in the 70s, more disillusionment started happening. Nixon got busted through Watergate. He lied. Our president has lied to us. And, you know, you know, it was like a, in, in, in time, that's like a one-two punch from Kennedy being assassinated. That's a one-two punch from Malcolm X being assassinated. A one-two punch from Robert Kennedy being assassinated. And all of a sudden, our very government, you know, is also corrupt. You know, it, it meant more than just Nixon being busted and all that stuff. That we were in an illegal, illegal war that people were just tired from, and we finally got to get out of there. And then we get hit with a gas crisis. And we get hit with disco. I listened to the Bee Gees. But we got hit with disco. I was there. Was, you know. And, um, you know, but at the, on the other side of that and stuff, man, we still had bluer skies and uh, peaceful music and a lot of kids who were growing up hanging out in the basements. This was the rise of letting your kids take the basement and make their own little world and stuff, right? There were still good things going on. And that's that's the big two differences between the generations and like history and stuff. You've got the big events that people will report, but then you got the real life stuff that was going on. You know, great pop culture stuff was still going on. TVs were starting to get more real with like Archie Bunker, which was supposed to have been satire uh, about the way he was a racist and stuff. Um, you know, and some of it kind of really went overboard. Even the movies changed. We went from Marlon Brando being the big rebel saying, somebody asking him, what are you rebelling against? And he's looking at him going, what do you got? You know, you know, we, we had things like that. And we also had Star Wars where pop culture changed. So you had before Star Wars and after Star Wars. I've said that for years. That's the era I grew in. And uh, it was a healing time is how I'm seeing it and stuff. And then the 80s came on. And we're repeating ourselves again. You know, we, the 80s was really a good time to kind of grow up. The economy was getting better. I'm not going to get into the trickle down economics. I uh, saw the aftermath of that in the 90s when I joined the military. Um, and it turned into a time where it was like, it was a very decadent time. And this is where, this is the generation that kind of, was, I've heard say things about millennials and stuff, yet I think they're kind of forgetting that we ended up being called the slacker generation, the me generation. I think that me generation thing's been passed around for a couple of them, a couple of generations. But, you know, it was the rise of the yuppies and the hair metal bands and it was all about partying and stuff, yet underneath all of that, there was really, it was a really more friendly time, at least in the areas I was, I was at and stuff you could go in and people would be civil and more social now, i'm not saying they'd give you a big hug or anything like that but there was this camaraderie you know camaraderie and stuff and underneath that pop culture started changing again you had alternative music underneath that would take over the 90s and stuff the smiths you know the smiths the cure things that came out of punk rock you know with the ramones and stuff i mean uh, Susie and the Banshees, Talking Heads from CBGBs, all these things that started in the late 70s started forming things in the 80s and the good stuff kind of went underground and stuff. Now what does all this have to do with the generations and stuff is that it's the picture is so big it all ties into one another. So with the 80s and the 90s, the 90s were, you know, we started getting nostalgic for the 60s again. You know, the monkeys came on MTV, MTV just 
blew up all over the place with the cable and everything like that and all of a sudden people have more things to draw from and to talk about and things and express yourselves yet things also became very corporate and stuff Duran Duran great band but even some of them were like does it all have to be corporate it has its place started people started becoming aware all over again of uh, material things social status not making you happy like it did in the great Gatsby and then you get into the 90s and all the things that were sort of underground with the 90s started coming through everybody said you know Nirvana just punk never died Nirvana just made it popular all the things they were doing you know all the things you can think of the 80s and stuff sort of had the nail buried uh, yet Nirvana's first album was like in 1989 I think an album called Bleach and that nostalgia for the 60s from the 80s sort of carried over and stuff right you know flannel and all this stuff and the alternative became mainstream and all of a sudden we lived in another time there where uh, the alternative lifestyle was coming in there was, there was social issues going on uh, things with the LBGT community were rising at least on college campuses and stuff things that uh, started becoming more acceptable uh, Bosnia and stuff and it's just really ironic that this big resurgence you can call it grunge and stuff some of the best music since the 60s in my opinion that drew from Black Sabbath and, and metal uh, Jimi Hendrix and things like that that people just don't hear and stuff like that unless you really into music and stuff there's a lot of people who aren't into grunge because they still listen to Black Sabbath and stuff there was a little bit of a lost generation with how quickly the world turned then we had the rise of computers the Coco computer from the 80s and stuff started giving away to bigger laptops we ended up uh, the internet was getting more and more accessible through dial-up um, technology was advancing if you didn't know it we had TV shows like the real world that were showing you how other people really acted uh, talk shows were big we started having news like from Dan Rather and Tom Brokaw end up turning into the Inquirer with uh, to me the pinnacle of that was like right at the switch when they saw all the ratings they got from OJ and stuff like that uh, that's when Jerry Springer was on the rise went from just another talk show and all of a sudden it was all about fights and stuff and if you couldn't see that half of those or more than half of those are fixed you just you're lost things started changing stuff more access more communication more things to draw from uh, and at the same time we got Clinton and we had another presidential scandal yet this was where everybody was divided it didn't feel like everybody in the world was really out to get old Bill and stuff like that and then we hit the next generation with the millennials and stuff coming up millennials who've you know they used to say that you know people born after the 50s there was when Saturday Night Live came out in the 70s that was the first generation that had grown up their entire lives with the TV and now we're in a generation they've lived their entire lives with the internet and the millennials have in my opinion this is just how I'm kind of seeing it have grown up in a time after 9-11 a time with paranoia and fear and terrorist terrible things on TV and stuff going back to at least to the 50s all over again repeating itself with the Red Scare and the Cold War and all that stuff and they're going to time but the difference is the technology and stuff there is an apathy there there's an apathy there's a, uh, a resentment from the older generation of you have all this technology and opportunity you're not using it the same people who were called slackers you know because they could have done more um, very different but this is also the very first generation that grown up and grew up in daycares a lot of them and everybody is special uh, if they did join a sports team and stuff yet you have these people who stand out who again there's always that middle of the road people uh, who get described as boring and things like that which I find ridiculous for getting married and having children and stuff and life still goes on that's where this generation's coming from but you know everybody is special and they get the daycare and you can point out there's a maturity problem and you can do this and do that and you can really come down on the millennials but the only thing that really breaks my heart about them and I get frustrated with them don't get me wrong that's what I'm trying to say there's that hypocrisy you can't get away from when you see things you can't get away from it but it's the first generation I've ever seen and maybe it's because of the internet maybe it's because of Facebook maybe it's because of all this stuff that I've seen actual videos popping up where they're apologizing for their entire you know generation like they're responsible for them they can do things 
And what's amazing about this is that the millennials really, to me, don't seem to be in a, in a spot, oh, I wish I had a better word, in a situation to where they're real creative and stuff. You can't, it's not fair to, to sit there and say the 60s, they were so creative and we had rock and roll pop up in the, in the 50s and it's got ties to the blues and stuff of the 20s and stuff like that and probably before and all this history and stuff and people were more creative and everything like that but this is the same generation that has all of this everything laid out on them on the internet but they also have the job of having to learn that they can't trust everything they read on the internet and animos and animosity through uh, being anonymous on the internet and a whole new concept of cyberbullying things that we didn't have to put up with there's things that we had to put up with that they don't have to put up with and stuff but to understand millennials and stuff you gotta understand this is the world we gave them with all this technology with our dicking it partying and having fun and stuff in the 80s all the things that they seem to lack in rebellion they really seem to make up in when they get a group of them they seem to get along pretty good and think out of the box and will try different things may not be the right thing to do to solve a problem or a task and it's awkward and it's hard to watch sometimes but we're the ones that made the video games we're the ones that has led to this twit you know twitch and video game culture and not a lot of physical stuff we're the ones that had the generation of nes and stuff i'm not saying we should take responsibility i think we should put our hypocrisy to the side and realize oh, the world they're living in is really what we made the pop culture stuff i mean in the 90s you had quentin tarantino and kevin smith talking about star wars and madonna's like a virgin in their movies everything get, we started dissecting pop culture <coughs> So that's just, you know, I think we kind of get there, yet this is all a cycle. The millennials with the technology are really, to me, the first generation that have things influencing who and what they are that we cannot imagine unless we grew up with it. Ironically, we're the ones that did it. The rise of the video game with Pong, the rise of the arcades, I, I played arcade games and shot pool and pinball, things like that. So, you know, the millennials really do seem to have this thing with my observations that they're really more about them and not the traditional stuff. I've also gotten told that their sex isn't as important to them as it was with us, and I'm going to call bullshit on that. I'll, I have my opinions on that. And up from 2009 to 2014, I worked in schools, different age groups and stuff. And I got a prediction, and st prediction is it's sort of watch what you wish for. Now, with me, the millennials could be more creative. That would be great. They could step back and stop criticizing. I have a, a whole lot. And we could also cut them a break and realize they've grown up in a climate and this technology and the internet and stuff that we didn't. Okay? But this next generation that's coming up. My prediction is that they understand the technology, they know what it can do, they communicate better on levels that we would never understand, and they're going to be dangerous and crafty as hell and sneaky and have the best poker faces you've ever seen. Now, I'm not saying that's evil, good, bad, or anything like that, it's just I've seen it. They have an understanding of things and the way their mind works and stuff like that, it's gonna be interesting. So give the previous generation a break. Don't look at things that are old and be repulsed and act like they've done something wrong in the devil because what you're about to deal with in the next generation is gonna have this older generation set back and be like, ha <laughs> karma. Just some thoughts, guys. I had a lot more to say, but there you go. Later.